All right, welcome everybody to this episode of Shirley Talk. I am Mike Mulrooney. And I'm Kelly Duckworth. And today we're going to talk about cancer, kids, and siblings. And uh, this is a pretty important topic. And first of all, we're not doctors. Kelly, are you in the medical field at all? Nope. No degree, nurse, doctor? Nope. Nothing, me neither. So this is all for entertainment and educational purposes. It's our opinions and things that we have learned from the patients and people that we have worked with through Shirley's Way. If you're not familiar with Shirley's Way, Kelly, you want to give them a brief on what it is we do? Yeah, we are a nonprofit. Um, we help cancer patients that are fighting cancer, obviously, um, in the forms of rent, mortgage, utilities, um, really your everyday expenses that someone may not be able to afford while they're battling cancer. Right, and we've given away quite a bit of money since we started mm -hmm. giving money away in 2014. But the topic today is cancer kids, and we'll start with the bad one first. And this one is really, you know, it's tough to, to pay attention to, but you're, you're sitting in a restaurant, and I'm going to build this little scenario here. You're sitting in a restaurant, and you see a young child come in with no hair, and everybody's heads turn and starts paying attention and looking, and, and you know, that's expected mm -hmm. because that's not a scene that you see very often, and people are curious, and it really causes a problem for that child, especially if they pay attention and notice that people are staring at them because they have no hair. Yeah, and think about the siblings that are sitting there too. Yeah, the siblings uh, sitting there watching. And, you know, me and my sisters, we're, we're close, but, um, but I can't imagine walking in as a sibling and seeing everybody staring at your little brother or sister because mm – -hmm. You know, your your sister is a lot older. You got a brother. Were you all close at all? I mean, you weren't you weren't even thought of when your sister was a kid. No, nope, and I hope she hears that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, my my siblings are way older than me, so I I can't really relate to this. Um, but my sister is actually more like a second mom. Yeah, I mean, she's over thirty years older than me. Yeah, so. thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. I'm as old as your older. Well, she's sister. older than you. Yeah, I know, that's right. So. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I can only imagine. Um, if I had, you know, one of them or, or vice versa, if I was the one that had cancer. I've coached basketball for a couple of years and, and there's two daughter, there's two girls, there's, they're twins and they're usually fighting, but I've seen them take up from one another mm -hmm. on the basketball court. If, if somebody does something to one of the sisters, the other sister is right there. So I can imagine if you're one of your daughters or your sons is fighting cancer and a sibling sees that, even though they don't get along half the time, most of the time I would think they would be very protective of their brother or sister. Yeah, I agree. And try to turn and get the um, attention off of them as they're sick. So mm -hmm. uh, folks out there, please, if you see, it, even, a, even an adult, but a kid, it's even worse. Um, and I know everybody's curious. Don't go up and start talking to the child. Don't go. They want to be left alone in most cases. And everybody's personality is different. But in most cases, they just want to be left alone and go out and have dinner with their family while they're feeling good. Because mm -hmm. most of the time with the treatments, they're probably not feeling real good anyway. So to be able to go out to dinner um, and enjoy a little family time is, is a chore for them. So. But keep that in mind. If you see somebody walking in a restaurant someplace that have no hair, just assume and don't stare. Look the other way. Do your best to not pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. But then you got, you know, everybody pays attention to the child with cancer. So let's get to the siblings a little bit. Um, you know, when, when kids are sick or anybody's sick, typically the focus is on them. And uh, even though the sibling may or may not understand what's going on, the first thing that probably pops into their head is, why is Johnny getting all the attention and nobody's paying attention to me? Mm -hmm. And I would think that's probably a normal reaction. But, you know, the, the best thing you can do is, is try and do extra things with the sibling. So if the child with cancer who is sick is taking a nap. Maybe sit down and play a game with the sibling or watch a movie um, or find a family or a close friend that is willing to come sit with the child that has cancer and, and go do something special with the sibling. I think they would very much appreciate that and get a little extra attention. Well, from a parent's perspective, can you imagine 
you know, you have three kids. So if one of them, you know, was sick and going to treatments five days a week and doing all this, I mean, what would you do with the other two? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, um, it's 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 a very tough road and I, I can't imagine and I hope I never have to mm-hmm. go through it. It kills me to even think about that. When my kids get a cold, the first thing that runs through my mind is, uh oh, what is it? Mm-hmm. Um, and I try not to be a hypochondriac, but but that's just a fact of life, given what we deal with every day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have several kids here in Louisville that, um, you know, that are sick. And for whatever reason, the treatment centers here in Louisville can't provide the treatment that the kid needs. So the parents have to drive back and forth to a closer facility up in Cincinnati. It's about an hour and a half, two hour drive. Um, But yeah, the kids get left at home and they don't understand why mom or dad is always disappearing to spend time with the other sibling. Mm -hmm. And they get their sick, but they don't understand 100% what they're going through. Yeah, I was going to say, I guess it would have to depend on the sibling's age. I mean, how much can they really understand, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's like, you know, right now with COVID, there's that one um, family that that they can't even stay in one facility because they have a sibling. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's just it. So do you send that one sibling home, you know, back home two hours away to, to be with family while you're with your other kid? Yeah, well, the parents in those situations, sometimes they separate. Yeah. One will stay here and the other one will drive up. So they'll spend weekends separated um, just to try and, and, and help and keep the other sibling occupied mm-hmm. and give them something to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of kids don't understand. And the first thing that they might think is that cancer is contagious. Mm-hmm. And we're not doctors. And from what we've read, I don't ever think that cancer is contagious. It could be. I had a friend that I mentioned on the last podcast, and and uh, we'd be at the dinner, and he couldn't eat anything, but he just wanted to be there. He had stomach cancer, and he'd say, all right, I just sprinkled cancer on those French fries. Be <laughs> careful. You know, he just had that sense of humor, but not everybody has that same sense of humor. But I, I wouldn't go that far, but they, you have to let the kid know that it's not contagious. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, maybe sometimes the kids will think that it's something they did to cause the sibling to have cancer. Yeah, something they did or said, and then they feel guilty about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Or did. or, or did. Like, mm-hmm. they might be playing, for example. And we just had a child. Or I say a child. He's 17, I think. And um, he was playing football and um, got tackled. And they thought he broke his leg. They did multiple tests and found out he had bone cancer. Mm-hmm. So I could see where other people might think they caused this kid to have cancer. And that's not the case. They probably actually saved his life right? finding it so early. But I could see where siblings might be playing in the living room or something. And the one sibling gets hurt and they take them to the doctor and they do tests and find out they had some form of cancer. I would imagine that child would feel like, what did I do to them? Mm-hmm. Um and, but again, that's not the case. You have to reassure the child that it was nothing that, that they did to cause their sibling to become sick. Yeah, um, there's an article out there um, that St. Jude posted. I put it on here. And there's just like a, which I, I guess it's good um, that they've acknowledged, you know, that they have this whole page out there for what to do if you have, a you know, another kid or a sibling. Um, and it just talks about what the parents can explain to that kid. And like I said, I it, to me, it would all depend on age and how much they can fully understand. But um, a couple of them were keeping life as normal as possible, mm-hmm. um, making time for that other sibling, relieving their guilt, like you said, if they feel like they did um, or said something, acknowledging those difficult emotions, which I think is a big one, um, preparing for those uncomfortable situations. Because I feel like as a kid, if you walk in and you see a sibling that's has all these tubes and, yeah. you know, things stuck in them and people are poking them and prodding them all day, you know, um, and then nurturing that relationship between the siblings too. Yeah, the, the, the tube thing is the one that hits home. I, can, I can't imagine, you know, as a parent walking in and seeing your child go through that, you have to want to take the pain away from mm-hmm. them and you absorb the pain. Obviously, that's not possible, but being a sibling or a child friend to see a friend or sibling sit there with all those tubes and needles and things that that go through it, it just has to be heart wrenching for them to try and deal with. This article was really good at St. Mm-hmm. Jude. They're, they're a fabulous organization. And, you know, talked about one of the things as adults, I've seen this happen, you know, a friend or a mom or somebody will shave their head because they're starting to lose their hair and then friends will shave their head in support. And it, it talks about, unless the child fully understands what's going on, not to do that with the sibling. I've seen pictures of that, and I think maybe parents think they're doing the right thing, but it talks about and suggests 
that the child that's not sick, because they shave their head, they might think that they might be sick. Um, so, you know, put that mentally in their head and they think that maybe they're going to have to go through the same things that their sibling or friend is yeah, going through. Yeah, I never through. thought about that. Yeah, I didn't either until I read that article. It was yeah. very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, but we have seen uh, parents talk about their other kids acting up in school. Mm-hmm. So pay attention to that. So if the kid comes home and all of a sudden they're straight A's and they're doing great and they come home with a B or a C in they got a detention. Mm -hmm. Is that normal? No. Yeah, probably not. Mm -hmm. So you really have to pay attention to that because the kid might be getting in trouble in school just to try and get a reaction or some sort of attention Mm -hmm. from the parent. Um, So keep in touch with your teachers uh, where your kids go to school because they see those kids all day long and can probably tell you and fill you in on things. You know, my wife's a teacher and she'll come home and talk about, they don't, she don't share names of kids, but she'll say this one child I can see this is going on in their family. She knows mm-hmm. exactly because the sibling or the kid, they're young enough. Kids tell you everything. If you want the truth, ask a kid or ask a drunk because they'll tell you the exact <laughs> truth just about every time. So, uh, but, you know, these kids tell the truth. And you can usually pick up, teachers will pick up things that parents don't pick up on that kids are going through. Yeah. Another one on here, um, leaning on your friends and family. Um, I know a couple of my f- close friends have kids now. Um, and so I can... Only imagine if one of their kiddos got sick, you know, I feel like they're half mine sometimes too. But yeah, leaning on your friends and family to help you. And, and if they have a sibling, obviously, you know, go over there, hang out with them, help them out as much as you can. We talked in a previous episode, if you want to check it out, about what to say or not to say with someone who has cancer. Mm-hmm. You have to be a lot more delicate when a child is involved. Um, but if you are that close family and have those close friends, you've got a very tight knit family mm-hmm. and group of friends. I could see you all signing up and taking a list and of names of who's going to watch this particular child and oh, yeah. where you're going to take them, take them to Chuck E. Cheese or Gaddy's or perfect, you know, in mm-hmm. some place to keep the child active. Yep. But you have to pay attention to those siblings because they don't fully understand um, the attention that is not being paid to them. Yep. So... But keep it in mind, uh, and there's always different things that you can do. If you're not 100% sure you have a child with cancer or you know somebody, check with the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. The social workers there at the doctor's offices have all kinds of resources and uh, help that might lead you in the right direction. Yeah, always reach out. Yeah, don't don't not reach out and Mm -hmm. let the child... Uh, it, it's just, it, we've seen it quite a few times. Um, and another thing, even though no, it's, you know, the child will be sick and uh, all of a sudden they're getting teddy bears and flyers and cards and um, gifts, take a moment to send something to the sibling. It just made me think of something. I remember we didn't, we didn't do it this past year because of COVID, but when we've done our angel tree before, we always get these requests for these kiddos and, you know, they want the, the latest PS5 or whatever's out there and you know you have all these things and they want which is understandable they're sitting in a hospital room for most of their life and they're bored to death but then we've talked about it before we're like well what's the sibling gonna get yeah you know oh they have two other kids well we can't provide for the other two siblings so this sibling's gonna get a $50 toy and you know the sick kiddo is gonna get a $300 toy you know how is that fair how do you do that Never thought about that. That was that actually came up. We maybe, all talked about it. Yeah, maybe we need to have a cancer kid tree and a sibling yeah. tree. That's a great idea. Yeah. And, and make sure that they're not left out. Because we just felt bad. We were like, we you know, we want to help out this the sick one, but what do you say to the siblings yeah. that you know that are younger and they don't understand? Were they bad? Yeah. Were they on the naughty list? You know, like they don't know. Well, they would think that they would. Depending yeah, depending on the age, right? Exactly. And, you know, it, it, but even even adults, um, and I'm a guy, obviously, and I, I see guys being big babies about stuff. If the wife is sick and she's not paying attention to me, you know, be a little respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I can't imagine being a kid dealing with that and fully not understanding mm-hmm. why nobody's paying attention to them. Nope. Um, it, it's just a horrible situation all the way around. So. I agree. So, anyway, keep it in mind. Top couple things today that we talked about is don't stare at somebody that's lost their hair in a restaurant or a, or a store. Uh, be very respectful. And I know it's difficult because people want to get involved and understand mm-hmm. and pay attention, but it, it comes across wrong. Um, and always keep the siblings in mind. So we're going to do a sibling tree this year. How about that? Sounds good to me. <laughs> I like it. All right, Kelly, how can people get involved with Shirley's Way and help us out? 
You can go to our website at shirleysway.org. Um, 2021, we are really pushing for $1,010 $10 monthly donors. So you all do the math. That's $10,000 a month, um, and we could help out a lot of people in our community. Um, and also, we do three raffles a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Queenofheartslive.org, that pot total as of, what is today, February 17th, it's over, getting close to 270000 I think. I was getting ready to look it up. Yeah, yeah it's, so. It's very close to that. Um, that's queenofheartslive.org. Wednesdays is jokerswildlive.org. That one's close to 33000 or maybe right over it. And then Fridays is wheelofcashlive.org. Um, and that's <coughs> a little bit over 19000 in total prize money. So three drawings. They're all split the pots. They're all $2 tickets. And tickets can only be bought online. So. A lot of fun, and I it just is. looked up the Queen of Hearts. And uh, granted, this is uh, this will go out at a different time, but the current projected pot total is two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Nice. Yeah, so get out there and get your tickets. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you here soon on our next episode of Shirley Talk. Thank you all.